Here on the desk, we've got a PC that has come back to the Tech Yes studio two years later. So the person who bought this, it was an X5675 system, I believe. Now they're saying that it turns on, but it doesn't give out a signal to the monitor anymore. And that basically could be a number of issues, starting from the GPU, could be a, a graphics card that's just had enough, or it could be just a faulty stick of memory, or even simpler yet, it could just be something simple as reseeding the memory or resetting the CMOS. So today, we're going to go through some of these steps and see what is wrong with this computer. But first things first, they said that they thought it was the power supply. And basically, I'm doubting it is the power supply because we're using a V750 from Cooler Master. This is, I believe, a gold rated power supply. It's got more than enough power, and it's actually a very high quality power supply. So basically, if a power supply is giving out power to a computer, usually most of the time, that's not going to be the problem. I mean, sometimes if a power supply doesn't have enough juice, in that, say, for instance, you're using a real crap power supply that's only like a 200 watt, and you've got say for instance an RX 580 or something higher power, then sometimes that can be the issue and it won't even display a signal because it doesn't have enough power. You can, however, in extremely rare circumstances, I've only actually ever had this happen once in the history of the channel, have a power supply that still works, but it is faulty. But usually in this case, or at least in the experience that I had with this faulty power supply, it still gave out a signal. So the fact that this isn't giving out a signal and we're using a really good power supply, makes me doubt that it actually is the power supply. So, with that aside, let's try and boot this thing up and see what is wrong with it. So we've now booted up the PC after resetting the CMOS where we just take the battery out when the power's completely off, make sure there's no power still on the motherboard, and then putting that battery back in after about 30 seconds and then booting it up. And what we see now is that the computer's booting up absolutely fine. The 12 gigabytes of DDR3 memory is being recognized too, so we don't even have to reseat the memory because there's essentially nothing wrong with this PC except this right here, and you may notice that that fan is not spinning at all. And that essentially still has the LED light working, which means there's power going to the fan still, it's just the blade is not spinning properly. And what we can actually do right now is move the blade, and we can hear there is a noise. So it appears like the fan has either got a bad bearing in it, something's gone, and that may cause it to stop working. Of course, it, mechanically, it could just be a fail fan as well in that it just no longer works. And what this could have done essentially is made the CPU overheat and then that could have caused the system not to boot properly in that it wouldn't switch back on. And they thought, oh my God, my system is no longer working properly, something's wrong. So what we're gonna do now is replace this failed fan where it's actually funny because the middle fan still works absolutely fine and you can hear that and that's breathing uh, air through the cooler. But we're gonna replace this front fan and then also give it a clean up and then see if there's any more problems with this PC. And uh, that's all right, laddies. This a PC be getting some talk, yes, loving. So we've now booted up the computer. Everything appears to be running fine, except the computer is extremely sluggish. And that, I'm gonna guess now, before we go into anything, that is that there's two factors involved. First off, there's no SSD in this computer. And two years ago, SSDs, when I sold this, SSDs were still pretty expensive. So adding that into a budget build would have increased costs. But the second thing is, I'm going to guarantee you that this hard drive in this system is practically full. And we'll talk about what that does to make a computer extremely sluggish. So uh, that is, we've got to open up the actual folder first and see how long it takes to open up and just to check that it's full. Thank you. 
What we've got right here is a one terabyte hard drive, similar to what's in the system at the moment. And now it's only got about 3% free storage left in that there's 28 gigabytes available of the one terabyte. And now basically with a hard drive and even an SSD for that matter, you generally want to have around at least 10% of that storage drive free, especially if it is the operating system drive, AKA C drive. And the reason for this is simply uh, Windows 10 and Windows 7 for that matter, they use virtual memory and also have temporary files. And so if there's no free space, what it then does is it fights to find partially free blocks. And so Windows uses that free memory, especially after the RAM is utilized on a system. However, if there's not enough free space available, it then struggles to find these free sectors and it starts juggling around the disk, looking for partially empty storage. And so this creates a very difficult problem, especially on a hard drive, which is slower by nature than an SSD. So one thing we can try on this hard drive is to defragment the hard drive. Now, you generally don't want to do this on an SSD. Uh, however, on a hard drive, what can happen, especially since these storages go to one terabyte and larger usually, is that um, what Windows will do is, especially as the drive fills up, is it will fragment uh, files over each of the different sectors. And so the more files that are stored and also fragmented, it then has to start bouncing around, trying to find, especially for instance, the system reserve files, which then adds another layer on top, which makes the whole system extremely sluggish. So what we're gonna do right now is most likely uh, defragment the drive. If that doesn't help whatsoever, then we're going to install an SSD because I don't want to start deleting files on someone else's drive, especially if they've got important information. So I'd rather just add an SSD on top and then they can format the computer afterwards the way they like. And now we're back after the defrag. This actually took a couple of hours, believe it or not. And what we're gonna do now is take off the desktop icons uh, just view, right click, view, take them away. And we're gonna restart the PC just to see if it has improved the snappiness at all. So if it has, then I can just say to the person, look, basically what we need to do is we need to clear up some space on your hard drive, but I'm still going to heavily suggest putting an SSD in this thing just to, uh, at least when I'm fixing this thing up now, have my sanity in check. Yeah, it, uh, it needs an SSD. So we just finished installing the SSD and this is just one of those night and day differences. This thing feels like it's gone from a 2005 or earlier millennia PC to now a PC that is modern day 2020. Though, one thing we're doing right now is we are testing out CPU and GPU temperatures just to see if I need to update and change the thermal paste. And it's looking with the CPU, that's absolutely fine where we're averaging out around 55 degrees on the cores with a maximum going into the 60s. And this is in like a 30 degree ambient environment here. So it is really hot, though the GPU is creeping up towards 80 degrees. So it looks like I'm gonna have to change the thermal paste on the GPU, but not the CPU. And you're probably thinking, well, you should just change them both. But speaking of waste, if you guys don't want to waste any more money than you have to on a Windows 10 Pro single end user license, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, 
has you covered for as little as 13 USD using the coupon code TYCSK with the link below, you can snag yourself a legit single end user license Windows 10 Pro key. All you have to do is go onto the website, use your payment method of choice, get the key delivered, which it's usually instantly, and then put that in, click change product key, activate, and you're now good to go with no watermark in the bottom right hand corner of your screen no longer. And with all that out of the way, we've now got a PC that's running like brand new that I get to return to the person and I'm pretty sure they're going to be pretty stoked because the performance is still really good as we saw that heaven benchmark though. The GPU temperatures, we got roughly a three degree drop. Uh, so the ambience are pretty hot and it is a GTX 780 OC edition. So it's gonna run hot by nature. Though everything else aside, the SSD made a huge difference to this PC. Uh, even though initially their problems were just a simple reset of the CMOS battery, there was some other problems to go through after this problem that I experience a lot with people buying PCs. And the most common issue by far is on the back of the motherboard, people uh, plugging their monitor in via the motherboard uh, display outs versus the GPU. I get this question literally like one in every two or three builds. Someone will be like, oh my God, I got this PC home and there's no signal. And I'll be like, I'll just show them a picture and I'll just say, make sure it's plugged off the bottom slots, not the top slots. And then I get a reply later. Thank you so much. It's working now. And that's the most common problem by far. Uh, even though the problem we saw here is actually uh, probably the second most common problem I do get where the PC doesn't boot up and it just needs a simple reset. Uh, or of course, on top of that, one thing I didn't say earlier is reseeding the memory. That's actually one thing that does work quite a lot as well. And reseeding the memory can also not only make the computer work fine again, but it can also bring back memory that is missing. So say for instance, someone will say, oh, like I have 16 gigabytes of RAM when I bought the PC, but now it's only showing eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, simply resetting the memory a lot of the times will fix this problem. Of course, you can have uh, faulty parts and that will come up as well. And the good thing was the owner of this build has taken good care of it. And you can see that when I was cleaning it out that everything was relatively clean before I even gave it uh, just quick tech yes loving. Uh, but one thing to note was that fan inside that was uh, dead as well, one of the fans. So it is important to, I guess, maybe every few months, just even just take a quick look and make sure your system's running uh, properly. And that means just checking the fans as well, because even though this fan here died, another common problem is fans can actually sort of semi-die in that they slow down and they're not working at their full capacity. And I have seen this quite a bit on graphics cards as well, where you'll see one of the fans spinning full ball and the other fan will just spin like at half the capacity. So, but I thought by taking this PC through the paces here today, I'd show you guys that a lot of the times it's actually a lot more simpler to fix up a PC and get it running to 100% than it is with the other ultimatum where you have faulty parts and you've got to replace things. And trust me when I say this, the motherboard, if, if you have a faulty motherboard, that one's a big pain. You gotta pull everything out and then uh, change the motherboard over and put everything back together. That actually takes longer than building a new PC. But do let us know in the comments section below, what are some of the problems you guys come into when you're dealing with PCs? Are your problems usually as simple as mine or are they more complex? Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. But speaking of thoughts and opinions, we've got the question of the day, which comes from BDivi2000 and they ask, why not vacuum instead of blower? So he's referring to why not use a vacuum cleaner instead of using the blower that we used uh, even in today's video. I have only ever used it to clean my tech with no issues. Blowers only make a mess of it. Uh, basically the blower, at least the data vac that we've been using uh, for quite a while here is a really good tool. I prefer it over vacuum cleaners any day of the week. And the reason being is it just has so much more power when it comes to just getting dust out of difficult places. If I used a vacuum cleaner, it would take me a lot longer and I just wouldn't 
clean out anywhere near the amount of dust that I'm getting out with the data vac, especially when it comes to things like power supplies and really getting in there and getting out all the nitty gritty. So the data vac, although it is pretty expensive and honestly, I wouldn't recommend it if you've only just got one PC because your return on investment is going to be terrible. Though if you are that guy in town that everybody goes to, or if you're building a lot of PCs over time, then the data vac's definitely gonna pay itself off pretty quickly, not only just saving you time, but getting a product really clean, really quickly. So hopefully that answers your question, B Divi. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And also if you stayed this far and you're enjoying the content and you're not subject, may wish to hit that sub button and ring the bell to get that content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.